Hey, today we're doing a clutch on the Cub International Cub 154. Uh, didn't see a whole lot of uh, videos on YouTube of how to change this clutch. This is, if you look at the manual, this this particular tractor comes in after they change the uh, clutch setup. Uh, on the older, I forget what the number is, but on the older clutch style, you have to on the older serial number, you have to actually take the motor. Take the, and unbolt it and shim it forward with wedges. Uh, this one, according to the manual, says you're supposed to just to be able to take the uh, a nut off and loosen it up and get everything in there. So we're going to go through this sort of step by step and cut in and out on this. So, all right, there's Cub 154. Uh, took the side cover off. And reading on the manual, it says to remove this Allen head. This is the drive shaft going back, back in behind, back to the clutch assembly, which is right back in here. So, have to undo that Allen head. And I'm going to sand that up a little bit just to see it slide a little bit easier, hopefully. And, uh, of course, these are the belts for your, your pulley and your belts for your power takeoff to get us to the rear of the tractor. So, all right, I'm going to get working on right there. Tip my finger. I'm going to break that Allen. Oh, let me rephrase that. I'm going to loosen that Allen head up and sand off that uh, shaft a little bit so it slides a little easier. Okay, I got the shaft slid out. What I did is I took out that Allen head, cleaned it up a little bit, threw a little bit of oil in there. See, it moves in and out. I hooked a pair of ice grips back here the shaft you see it's kind of I have the shaft completely out so now all my work will be done back here uh, this has to come out the springs for the clutch brake and all that has to be undone all these cotter pins need to be undone uh, yeah I got the heater running because it's a little chilly out here in our old garage tonight so all right you can see how free that shaft is now it actually moves in and out. Well, if it was lined up, see, oh, there it went. They actually give you enough room, it moves fairly decent, actually. So, all right, when I get the, this all disconnected, I'll get back to you. All right, I got the clutch disc out. As you can see, there it goes. Just a little worn. Uh, also, see down here, the pressure plate is a little loose. So I got to tighten that up. Just two bolts in the back side needs tightened up. One thing that's very important on this new throwout bearing is make sure you mount it down with the grease fitting down. There's no fitting up top. That makes it easy to grease whenever you're running. I think it's part of your maintenance program to throw a little grease in there. It keeps everything fresh. We got the clutch plate back in. It's aligned with the oh, oh, sorry about that. There it goes. It's aligned and everything's set. I have to remount the uh, this plate here. That needs to be bolted on. And then the clutch brake back here it needs tightened up yet. And of course the pin back in there is done yet. So well, slowly coming back together pretty good, so. Okay, get the uh, clutch lever re uh, reconnected here. I'm just putting the plates back on here. Uh, there it is. Getting the uh, engine shaft bolt nut back in. 
so we'll get that all taken care of. Uh, a few more odds and ends, then I get to adjust the, uh, then I have to adjust the clutch using this nut right here for the one inch travel, one inch play before it does anything. So uh, all these bolts can tighten down. The best way I found to tighten them down is to engage, turn to where you can get to it, engage the transmission and gear, and then just tighten it up. Uh, check the pilot bearing in the back side, it looked good. Uh, new pressure plate clutch, throwout bearing. So, I got everything back in, the clutch is in, everything. Uh, adjust the brake now. So, when you push the clutch, the flywheel stops. Clutch out. About one inch movement. Clutch uh, 154 International Tractor. Thanks for watching.